Welcome to Six Man Blitz. Got a great episode for you guys today. Man, it's a great day to be a Bears fan, man. I know you've seen what happened. I know, ev- I know everybody's seen what happened. But before we get into that, for my intro remark, I want to talk about the the Creed movie. You know, I went to see it. Me and Jocelyn went to see it. It was a great film. Hands down, mm-hmm. this is the best one in the trilogy and Jonathan Majors, he's really, he's really turning things around. Like he's really becoming that next dude. Like, like how Chadwick was before. You know, he sadly passed away. He's really coming that up that trajectory. You know, so this, you know, he had Ant Man. He was really good in that. And now in this, he was really flawless in this performance. And the fighting, the end, the end fight was pretty damn good. It was kind of like anime, but some people say it was rushed. But that was spoiler I, I fuck with for me. Oh, I won't spoil it for you or the other viewers that are watching. But so, yeah, you Thanks. you you want to get into this Bears talk? You know, what, what am I talking about? The biggest trade of the day happened. What, All right, what? let's dive in. <laughs> so what were your thoughts on this trade, man? Man, I thought it was a fantastic trade, especially when the news broke about Jalen Carter. And it's like, OK, now we're in a position where the guy we may or may not have gotten is out of the question. Or if you trade back to four, you know the Cardinals might take one of the two, whereas mm-hmm. now it's like, all right, the Cardinals are either going to trade back or they're taking Will. Will, Car- uh, <laughs> yeah. Will. So <laughs> it, it kind of put them in a situation where, okay, this, you know, the things around us kind of played it out for us. So Carolina, no question, had to make an aggressive move to get that pick because you could understand why the Colts and the Texans wouldn't because they had we would have still been in a high pick. We would have still been drafting high. So yeah, the Panthers had to be the most aggressive for obvious reason, and they were. And we took we took them for everything they were worth. Please Not to don't. mention, <laughs> did we get the draft capital? But we got we got a, a number one receiver, arguably the I mean the best receiver we've had since Alshon Jeffrey or Ooh, um, B Marshall. <laughs> so B Marshall. So I mean, we got a bona fide number one. I mean, every year he's had a thousand eleven hundred yards outside of uh, his rookie year and this year where you know. Who, who knows it was who was throwing him the ball certain <laughs> weeks? It was a bad year at quarterback <laughs> so this year. We got a we got a bona fide number one that could take the top off the defense as well as run every route on the route tree and can win one on one and can score from anywhere on the field. You you put that with a running quarterback, much like you've seen the Eagles do. I mean, that's a nightmare to defend. The draft capital we we were able to get not only a number two for this year. A twenty twenty four. We get the first, yeah, a first and a second. Um, so, I mean, we're good for the next two drafts, and we're still in a position where that was just the first domino. <laughs> I'm ready. Hey, so free agency it, starts Monday. Free agency is so. gonna, and I think this is an important move because now team now pl- free agents are gonna see. Okay, I like what the Bears are doing. I'm not going there alone. Mm-hmm. They have the talent, and and they got a guy at receive a quarterback. So, I think we become a more attractive free agent market just because of that. The trade we just made before free agency hits. Yeah, so and I it's, think it's all exciting around has been amazing. Yeah, it's a, it was a great move by Ron Poles. People were talking so much shit about him, bro. Like last year, they're like, "Oh, he doesn't care about Justin Fields. He just he's not sold on Justin Fields. He's not trying to get him help." And look what he's doing now. He's getting he, the Chase Claypool trade. That was a move to get, you know. And with right. that, you know, with DJ Moore now being the number one receiver, that allows Darnell Mooney to get back in the slot and play the position he's supposed to be playing. Claypool able to not have to be the number one receiver. Like people are expecting, you know, now you have three dudes at receiver that you that are weapons that you can, you know, do some things with. And then that helps uh, Cole Komet too, uh, be more uh, versatile at tight end, be more of a threat because you got three guys you got to guard. You got you got three guys you got to co- cover. And then, you know, him getting open looks down the field. And he had a lot of success this year in the end zone, too. You know, what he had like seven touchdowns this year. So, 
Things yep. can things can get scary. But the question is, what are you doing at number nine? At pick number nine, who are you drafting? That is a great <laughs> question. So I love the idea of us getting a receiver. I mean, you could arguably get the best receiver available at number nine. And, and uh Addison, and that wouldn't be the case Quentin in certain Johnson, drafts. And Jigba, like you have a lot of options with the receiver. Uh, for sure. And I think we should get a J- in Jigba. No question. Um, but it it all depends what edge rusher is still left at mm-hmm. nine. So you look at obviously Will Anderson, there's no question he's getting taken early, but is Tyree Wilson on the board that late? he's available, I'm taking him. <laughs> Oh, I, I think that's that's the play. So if Tyree is available, you take him immediately, no questions asked. If he's not, you go to receiver, no questions asked. Fuck is you saying? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then we gotta we got to get some get some good guys in free agency. Bring Khalil Mack for the low. Um, hey, I'm not mad at that because hey, the Bears then, how they're and, looking now. It's a contended team, maybe. What's the first right. domino that falls? You're like, all right, what's happening after this? This might be a team I want to come back to, you know? For sure. We get Khalil Mack on a team-friendly deal. If we trap Tyree Wilson, our our pass rush woes are literally erased. And then we start to add depth at those positions. Mm-hmm. Obviously get some guys in free agency in the back end. And we draft well on the offensive line. Shit. We 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 making some noise, and that's a lot of ifs, obviously. But <laughs> Poles has been making the moves necessary. Now Claypool can – he don't have to be the number one. He could be that yeah. gadget guy that he was at the height of his career, getting jets, getting those 50-50 balls, kind of um, creating plays for him to have success uh, against the third corner as opposed to the number one. Mm-hmm. And – that's only going to make him better. Obviously, it's going to step up my man's game. And then we got to get another guy. Oof. I think we got to get another top guy in the draft as well as in free agency. And then we'll be we'll be locked and loaded. Now, this uh, with Minnesota, too, a team in the NFC North, they're making moves and a lot of questionable moves. Adam Thielen is, you know, he just got released today. Is that a guy you'll be mm-hmm. interested in to bring in as a veteran? Because, you know, the Bears, their quarterback's coach, he spent some time in Minnesota with Adam Thielen. So is that a move mm-hmm. you'd be looking towards? Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't hurt that at all. Anytime you can get uh, veterans, especially in division, mm-hmm. um, good culture guys, good glue guys, guys that can come in on a third down and you know he's, he's uh, a guy that's going to come down with the ball for you. And a big guy, I think if we could move him into the slot, he could easily have a lot of success. And he's still got a lot of tank um, fuel in the tank if just because of, you know, his skill set and he's a technician route-wise. So get him on a team-friendly deal. Let's bring him down. Yeah, fuck it. The receiver for the Chiefs, uh, Nicole Hardman, he put out a tweet with some eye emojis towards uh, Justin Fields throwing him the ball at their time in Georgia. That's another guy. So there's there's a lot of guys we can bring in, but with the addition of um, DJ Moore, maybe we need to lean more towards another bigger body receiver. Like, you know, uh, so. <laughs> Pause. Uh, Jacoby Myers, maybe. That's a guy you could still or, look at. Or maybe you get, uh, I, I don't like, I'm not a huge fan of Quentin Johnson, even though he's a big body guy. I'm not, but just like, cause, yeah. I mean, he just he just gives me Kevin White vibes, bro. I'm gonna be <laughs> honest. <laughs> you got you got PTSD from Kevin White, huh? <laughs> I do, honestly. I mean, golly, we we got what we pick him at seven. God damn, he was nice That's in college. Bad though. drafts. <sighs> I mean, when you're faster than everybody, yeah, you're gonna be nice. But you, you're not but, gonna be faster than you're not gonna be the fastest guy on the uh, on the field. Some games, and that shit don't really matter in the NFL. Everybody don't. fast. Everybody is fast. But Jackson Smith and Jigba, you get a guy like that. I, I think got the that, connection. 
the connection there is instant. And then Jigba, I mean, I, I've seen him do things in games I've never seen done before. I mean, the the way he <laughs> is just always open and his yards after catch, I mean, he's a phenomenal receiver. Imagine that receiver room, too. You have four guys that can do like do some damage and possibly, you know, they all four of them, you can make a conversation for them being wide receiver two or wide receiver one. But, and then you're for, we're forgetting about somebody, Debo Samuel Jr. coming out, coming off the, uh, <laughs> Valence <Bayless> Jones. <laughs> who knows? He could have a good off season. <laughs> who, kn- who knows? He could be putting in the work on the jugs machine. He said he's going to be invested in that. So, you know, that might spark something out of him. He had a la- yeah. he had a good uh, last two games. So yeah, he finished strong. He finished strong. I'll give him that. <laughs> but with Green Bay, I don't know if you've been seeing, but the Jets they've been showing love to him. Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson. They posted a little video of them burning the cheese head, all that shit, trying trying to summon Aaron Rodgers to come to New York. So what do you think this Jets team would be like with uh, Aaron Rodgers at quarterback? You think they could win a Super Bowl? You think they could be a championship contender? No, boy. We've seen this story before. <laughs> Didn't the same thing happen with Brett Favre? Yeah. But I think Aaron Rodgers is better than Brett Favre at, at this time, at this moment. But, hey, Brett, hey, Brett Favre, Favre led the Vikings to the NFC Championship. What are we talking about that, here? That is true. That was a nice Vikings team. <laughs> so I, I, this is giving me Brett Favre vibes, no question. So, I mean, they're not going to win a division. No, they they honestly could with with um with him at quarterback, but yeah, I mean that's a tough division because you got to beat three teams that could make the playoffs. You got the Dolphins, Patriots, and Buffalo. Buffalo for sure is going to be a playoff team, but you know we'll we'll talk about you know the Dolphins QB situation after this. I think but... uh, I think it's the best move for him just because you know they're a team that's. Very similarly built to to what he's used to in Green Bay, um, mm-hmm. and he's got a true number one in Garrett Wilson, and I think the fit is there. But is there there they're going to be a playoff team? No question. Mm-hmm. They're going to compete for the division. No question. I think they might split with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know sweep the Patriots, but. Like you said, it's a it's a nightmare of division and it's a nightmare of an AFC. So to put them into context, it's just like I don't see who they're better than with A Rod. And I, I can't say they're better than the Bills. I definitely can't say they're better than um the Chiefs as well as the Bengals. So it's it's just a such a tough be, conference and division, but Right. Yeah. So <laughs> I love the move for A Rod, and I'm excited to see how it pans out. But I'm not high on it uh, as an overall result of the season. So, what do you think about on the other side of that, Jordan Love? What do you think like the Packers will be like with him? Will they have success? Because they're still going to be a pretty decent team. Like Ross, yeah, they'll be around five hundred. They'll be like, <laughs> you know, goddamn motherfucking. Uh, they'll be like eight and nine. Okay, okay. <laughs> seven and ten. They'll float around there. I think so. Yeah, they'll be competitive for sure. But there's a lot of teams in that middle of the pack where, you know, you didn't lose every. As all these games are one score games, and if you don't. A lot of people win a lot of them. A lot of people don't win a lot of them. So they're going to be on that, the bottom half of the, those teams. What do you think uh, Jordan uh, Love's production is going to look like? You think he's going to have, uh, you think he's going to be a quality starter? Or you think, well, what should we expect to see out of him? He didn't look too I think terrible he'll be a game manager. I yeah. think I think he's, uh, he's going to be a, a game manager in this league. Um, a guy that can, you know, you know what you're getting type of guy. Uh, you want to have a balanced offense, which they do already, mm-hmm. around him, and then retool the de- defense, and he'll be a, a starter in this league. But I don't think he's a rod. No, there's no doubt about that, and he's definitely not Far- Brett Favre. So <laughs> them going from Brett to a rod with no gap uh, was 
kind of like catching lightning in the bottle, and you know, now they're about to. They're gonna figure See what out. we have to, what we've dealt with <laughs> for a hundred years. <laughs> so, so I'm happy for them. I'm excited for the the Green Bay future. Yeah, it, it, they have a talented young core. You know, Christian uh, Watson, uh, Dobbs. They got some good young pieces. Sure, sure. So, what do you think this NFC North division looks like now? Who would you lean more towards, the favorite wise? I mean, you look at the Minnesota Vikings, them winning the division last year. And they just cut Eric Hendricks, Thielen, all a lot of talented starters. I think they're even in talks of cutting Harrison Smith too. So, like, wh- what do you think about where this division stands right now? Man, they're like a a diet version of the the Niners, like consistent, like mm-hmm. very great program, draft well, um, just talented offense, talented roster, but. Um, they got some guys that are getting up there in age and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get At some younger. point, you got to get them out of there. Yeah. So those guys were, you know, they, you know, we've seen the best of them, in my opinion. And it's just, you know, sometimes it's time to keep it, keep it moving. And you got to get, get fresh bodies in there. So I'm not mad at that. And they are kind of in a crossroads, like, I think this last year they performed really well, but they were a team that, you know, won a lot of close games, came back a lot. You can't guarantee that type of performances year over mm-hmm. year. So I'm interested to see, and I am I know they ain't sold on Kirk long term. I think they found their coach, though. Yeah, I he's love a good the coach. coach. And you got, some, you got some young talent, too. Obviously, Justin Jefferson is – Mm-hmm. The best receiver in the league, so <laughs> got some talent, and um, but I think they're at a definite crossroad, and they have a unique roster where there's some guys getting up there in age, um, Kirk being one of them too. So then you look at Detroit, and they surprised a lot of people this year. They looked fantastic. They have a lot of great talent, a lot of young guys, like and they they've made smart moves. Um, it, uh, upstairs, so yeah, that's allowed them to get draft capital for this year, and they can go get a guy. I mean, what are they drafting at? Top, I think they're six or five, so they're they're up there. Jalen Carter, right? So <laughs> you look at you look need at help defensively. I mean, goddamn motherfucking right. So, or they could draft a guy like. Uh, Anthony Richardson and let him sit behind Jared Goff for a couple of years. So, you know, there's a lot of teams like it that got a guy like that, or Seattle could do that. You never know. Mm-hmm. That is a lot of a lot of you know decisions to make all out of all these teams in the NFL. So, Carolina has a first pick now. What do you think they should do with the number one pick? Who should they draft? Who would you draft if you're the Carolina Panthers front office right now? Who, what quarterback is catching your eye the most? Oh yeah, Bryce Young, no question. Really, with uh, the high concerns, man. <laughs> Kenny Ball, that's all that matter. <laughs> yeah, he's a baller, no question. But you're right. I, I'm if if I ain't got no O line or if I don't have a plan to protect him, well, you've seen what what happens with frail quarterbacks, even big quarterbacks. It's just a long seventeen games is a long season, and then you have to be at your best going into the postseason. So you you get a guy like that in some of those cold (laughs) places. Carolina, yeah. But at the same time, I'm not going to lie. I don't know if it's the eye candy, but Anthony Richardson is is a freak of nature. What did you say that last time we recorded? You said he had a man crush on him? (laughs) Man, he's a Greek god. This this guy is a freak. Combine numbers. This guy's a superhero. He ranked first in everything, like every test he could have did as a quarterback and as an athlete too. I think he had the highest athlete tests. So he's got oh, no he's question. got it all. Yeah, and that's somebody I would look towards to drafting if I was you know I I'd, I'd break it down and be like you know this guy we have the coaching staff if I have the trust in you know the guys we got in the front office, if I have the trust in the offensive line, the skill position we got, 
I'm going to take a chance on Anthony Richardson because he could be the, the next best thing. The next best he is, thing. Yeah. He is freaky. Very He's freaky. freakier than anything we've ever seen at that position. <laughs> <laughs> Which is and, scary. And to we've think. seen some crazy things. We've Justin seen obviously Fields this year, you know. Justin Fields, what he's been able to do, obviously what Jalen Hurts has been able to do, and obviously what Lamar has been able to do, and then Vic and the list goes on, but we ain't never seen nothing like that. And <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> but <clears throat> does that mean that he's hard to I mean I, I do like C.J. Stroud, too. I think C.J. Stroud is 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 who I would take number one if I'm not taking Richardson. I'd take him over Bryce Young, to be honest. He's got the yeah. good makeup. Got the good size, yeah, he's too. Got, he's got everything you want. And then he was able to run the ball pretty well, mm-hmm. which, you know, I mean, even when you're at Ohio State, you don't have to run the ball if you're a quarterback. Just because the talent they got at receiver guys, is, <laughs> you know, who you, like it's so it's just pitch and catch for them boys. Uh, so receiver, you <laughs> even Justin Fields didn't have to run that much, but when he did, well, you seen what happened when um, CJ Stroud did. So, dude, the Georgia game was huge for him. I think that Georgia game, that oh, shit, yeah, it was, it was that jumped huge. his stock in cre- like huge. Yeah, because you've seen when the moment was brightest, he elevated his game. He put his team in a position to win, and he willed them against the best team we've we've seen in a while in Georgia, and they were a field goal away from winning making that, game. that, which in the NFL, that's a, that's probably going in, especially indoors. So. Yeah. Indoors. <laughs> <laughs> that SpongeBob episode. <laughs> but, indoors. <laughs> but so um, OBJ, he's having workouts. A bunch of teams that are interested in him are going to be there. So where do mm-hmm. you think the best pop for OBJ is now? Apparently he's healthy. He's good. I think he's like 31, 30. He's around that age now. So. What team do you think should take a chance on him? Because if he was anything like he was with the Rams, that playoff run, he's still got some tank. He's still got some left in the tank. And he's still going to win uh, every matchup against a second or, uh, cornerback or mm-hmm. third. Yeah. So I think his best option is being that that Robin to a, to a Batman maybe in uh, – Maybe in Las Vegas, or Oof. or you put him in uh, Las Vegas would be nice. Him and Devontae. exactly. Renfro so you, you... in the slot, <clears throat> right? So see, we could play I would like him somewhere that. like that. <laughs> yeah. Um. But they they have question marks at quarterback. So Jimmy I don't G. Know if he would go there. Maybe he goes to New York, but for Back the Jets, home, yeah. yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> oh, for the Jets. <laughs> yeah, for the Jets. <laughs> hey, if Rodgers goes there, I would like that. That, that would be nice. But I would like him and for the Giants, too. So both New York teams, I think, could see a media impact from him. I think he'd like it going back to the Giants because he'll be the true number one on a playoff team. So Okay. <clears throat> There's that. Or you go to Dallas. And Dallas would be nice. You play under the star. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Uh, get Dak another piece because he's going to need it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the, the, I, my, I like the Cowboys the move. Head. I like the Jets move. But mm-hmm. every time I see mm-hmm. a talented receiver on the market, you know what I'm always going to say? Baltimore. If he goes to Baltimore, that, you know, that will give him, I feel like he can put up a thousand yards with the Ravens. He could have no that question. kind of production. Him and Rashad Bateman together would be nice, Mark Andrews. But that's if the biggest question mark of the NFL offseason, if Lamar is with the Ravens, you know, that's if he gets, if they get the deal done. So w- what do you think about him in Baltimore? How do you think that would look? You think they'd have success with that? Oh, no question. Yeah, I love that move too. I mean, I love it for Lamar because, mm-hmm. you know, you'll get – Another weapon. I mean, they've got the cheapest offense in the league. <laughs> I've seen a stat. Like, they're top three, and the other two are, are terrible. So. Penny pitches. 
So like, come on, man. At some point, he's turning he he's turning lemons into lemonade. Not only that, he he winning MVPs with this type of offense. You know what I'm saying? So, he didn't even have Bateman when he won the MVP. He had uh, Hollywood Brown. I can't tell you who who the other receivers were. Mark Andrews. Neither can I. <laughs> he's just so, been dynamic. Yeah. They gotta get. They gotta get this stuff figured out. I mean, at some point, <laughs> the transition. Yeah. We what do you think about the situation? Taken care of. Like, uh, people have been saying, like, the owners and stuff are sticking together, and they're not letting like another big Deshaun Watson guaranteed kind of contract come into picture. So it's like kind of owners sticking up for each other kind of thing. But what's gonna happen mm-hmm. when Burrow comes in the picture? You know, well, how like. So I don't understand that dynamic, but and it's just hard to tell what's happening with these contract no- negotiations because he doesn't have an yeah. agent. So yeah, l- I love to hear your take on what the current state of Lamar Jackson and the Ravens' uh, contract negotiations are. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot we don't know, and then there's a lot we are assuming yeah. for sure, and then. We got to take the media for what they're telling us, but who knows if what's true and what's fake and what's distorted and what's not. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's it's kind of been hard to read. Honestly, you look at I've heard s- stories like this was strategy, like the Ravens <laughs> knew, like this is inclusion, but it it might as well be. Where they're like, all right, if you want to, if you want what you say you want, let's see who will, who's willing to to make that happen. And I don't know what that means. If somebody's going to come out of this, or hey, teams, it's uh, Carolina's clearly out. You know, they're going for their guy in the draft. Yeah, they're they're <laughs> out for sure. <laughs> so that was a destination. And then if you're some of these teams that didn't get that that who are trying to get the first overall pick and you go into draft night and then you still don't get a guy. Do you look at Lamar and try to make a move there? So, yeah. I mean, you look at the Jets, they don't get Rodgers. That's, you know, they can pounce on Lamar. They're desperate for a quarterback, you know, for sure. So at the end of the day, you really don't know what is transpiring behind closed doors and the NFL has an incentive to have agents Mm -hmm. um, in place. You know what I'm saying? And it's a way to buffer them and the player and, and be able to treat players like just, you know, dollars and shit. So, yeah. I mean, cause if he gets that contract without an agent, what does that say? You know, if he gets that, Fully exactly. guaranteed. That's, if that resets so, the market type shit, so. Does Joe Burrow need an agent? Mm, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Does any top guy need an agent? Maybe outside of like, say I'm I'm working with um, Mav Carter in the NBA. That makes sense because obviously he's got connections to. to to deals outside of the NBA. Like, obviously, I'm going to get your shoe deal. I'm going to get mm-hmm. your TV deal, the movie deal, the brand deal, this and that. <laughs> then, okay, that it makes sense to have an agent in that spot. But if you know who you are and you know your value and you can be honest with yourself and, and be smart and understand the business of the NFL, then why, why wouldn't you be able to negotiate your deal. You see every yeah. deal that's been done before you. Every all that shit is public. You know exactly what your homie's getting. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, Roquan got that deal without an agent. He got paid top, highest paid linebacker, and he was barely with Man. the Ravens for a little. So it's just and his same team. So <laughs> I don't want to hear that agent shit. That shit. Yeah. I mean, it's it's only an agent problem because they're being difficult. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason why. Um, and when I mean they, I mean Lamar and his camp. Obviously, they're not playing ball, and they're too far apart for whatever reason. Like the Ravens are, for I, I mean, is it are they wrong to feel like they 
shouldn't be concerned about guaranteeing him 250 M's. Like, bro, you just got hurt two years in a row. We, we could, we could go half the season, which we not knowing if you're going to play week over week, like yeah. literally every week he was questionable. I, that, it, during the uh, back half of the last season, couple last couple of year, years, so yeah, I'm he's not, been banged up a lot. I'm, I'm having a hard. I mean, I think Lamar. He bet on himself last year, and he probably could have got more before. Mm-hmm. And because now you have two years where you didn't finish the season for this team, it's just tough. It's really tough. It's a tough position. I don't like the decision position he's putting himself in. Mm-hmm. And I hope we get this figured out. But you got to know your worth, bro. You've been hurt back to back years, and, and you run the ball <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> if we pay your ass, we can't get none of them receivers you want <laughs> either. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta play both. Be able to see both sides of the fence. Is all. Yeah, and um. Another team that's got a quarterback that gets banged up a lot, the Dolphins. They just picked up his fifth year option. That's another team I thought should be, should be trying to get Lamar. The Dolphins, you add a piece like that at the quarterback position. This Dolphins team is a Super Bowl c- contending roster. They have every, all the pieces. You just at the quarterback position, there's a lot of uncertainty. Tom Brady was rumored to come back and play for the Dolphins. So every year, you're going to keep seeing these rumors come out. At the quarterback position, Deshaun Watson, they were trying to get him. But so what do you think about the Dolphins, you know, trust in Tua? Should they be looking elsewhere? Or what, what do you think? Where's your head on, head at with the, the Dolphins? Yeah, that you bring up a good point. It's just, it's kind of confusing. Like, <laughs> they're, they've been extremely aggressive in the moves they made. I mean, getting Tariq Hill. I mean, getting uh, Chubb, like – extremely aggressive with trades and sounds like they're in win now mode, Mm -hmm. but you got a guy in Tua who's made of glass (laughs) (laughs) and you can't rely on him playing a 17 game season, let alone the playoffs. And they're always going to be an eight and eight team with him. I don't give a fuck what you say. Like they're always going to be 500. He going to win eight and he ain't going to play eight. (laughs) (laughs) It's <laughs> <laughs> not going to make it 17 Let's games. Let's keep it a buck. That's the pro. Like, it, it don't matter who's at the, uh, coaching. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, the same record as my man's had. Uh, B-Flow. B-Flow, yeah. Brian Flores, shout out to him. Like, the exact same record. The exact same season, too. <laughs> he did the exact same thing, bro. He would go 8-0 and then lose nine in a row. Wait. And vice versa, exact yeah. same thing happened last year. And, all, it like and comes I think down a lot to like, of that what has to about? do with Tua's health. Yeah, it's Tua's health. Look at Tua. when Tua's healthy, they will they win. His winning percentage is ridiculous when he's out, when he's hurt. I mean, you see what happened. You know, yeah. they could have beat the Buffalo uh, if Tua's healthy. Yeah, okay, damn near you know almost beat saying? him without him. <laughs> right. So I think. They see that, and they know Tua is a good quarterback. But your best ability is availability, and that's his worst. He he is <laughs> untalented in that category. <laughs> so yeah, I and it's, mean, you know it's it's man to man. It sucks, but that's from a business perspective. Got to, got to go. You got to take so, care. of I mean, you pick too. up his fifth year. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um. They're just kind of in no man's land at that position. Like, there's who 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 could you get? Aaron Rodgers. And it, it's it's and funny it sounds too. Like they don't want him. Yeah, it's funny too. His their backup quarterback even was injury prone. Teddy Two Gloves. Every time he came in with uh, two was hurt, he got hurt. <laughs> so it just because he like their ass too. <laughs> It's just a lot of... They be in the gym with uh, Spongebob and shit with the teddy bears on the... <laughs> him, and Tua, him and Tua do not be working out, boy. They just be throwing that, throwing the peel around. <laughs> they be with the special teams, the kickers. <laughs> right. They not working out. I mean, they don't have to. You know, you're a quarterback, so... Yeah. But at the same time, you need you a stallion at the position. What? Where are they drafting at? Shit. 
Um, probably like 15, 16, 20, that range. They were oh, a playoff yeah. team. I, I don't that. I don't know. Do they have a first round pick? They might. Let's see. They traded it for Chubb, right? Yeah. But they got they got, they got a bunch of first round picks uh from from the 49ers from the, to get Trey Lance. Oh, yeah, that's right. So they had a lot of draft capital. So for sure. I don't know. I mean, could Anthony Richardson falls to them in the draft? <laughs> That'd be nuts. Hey, you five me? <laughs> nah, he's not falling that far. I don't even think they're in there. Oh damn! So let 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 me get a hot take from you before we head out. What do you think? A hot take? Let's do it, man. Hot take. I think <laughs> I think the Panthers gonna tra- drive Will Levis. Oh. God damn, for the <laughs> I hope not. Then they no, really lost the trade. Then they yeah. real like that trade. Getting rid of DJ Moore, that shit was all for nothing if you tra- get Will Levis. Because <laughs> you could have got him at nine, probably. <laughs> If we're being real, who? Panthers, maybe. Well, I mean, us. May, I, I well, don't I'm know. The Colts, the Colts like them. You think they'll? You think they'll take CJ Stroud? I think they take Bryce Young. I think they like him yeah, more. Bryce Young's the the sexier pick. Mm-hmm. He's got. But he's the riskier, in my opinion. Yeah, you think he's riskier than but Anthony he's, Richardson? He's the one that could be. Hell, uh, no. Yeah. Because Anthony could never develop as a passer. You never yeah. know. Will Levis Whereas Bryce is... Young, he, he, can th- he could make any throw. He's he's fit to pa- from, uh, pa- as a passer. That nigga's the best. <laughs> <laughs> he be throwing that See, shit on the money. last throw it right on you. He be throwing <laughs> that right on you. So, I like him. And he, he could change the game like stuff. Mm-hmm. But he's got to get that bitch and duck. He got <laughs> <laughs> he got to be falling. When he he got to be on Mahomes time for sure. And if he throws an interception, don't tackle. Get your ass out of bounds. No, he get don't out the try way. to make a play. He get out the way. <laughs> Head to the sideline, chief. But all right. So hot take of the week. I'll take. I think. I think. The Bears will make a bunch of splashes in free agency. I think we pick up a guy uh-huh. like Jawan Taylor, right tackle. I think we get a guy like Javon Hargrave, defensive tackle from the Eagles. And I think we get one or two linebackers in free agency. And, you know, draft-wise, I think we pick up a receiver in the draft with the ninth pick, Jackson and Jigba. And we have a top five offense in the league. We already had the number one rushing offense in the league. That passing attack is going to be different. We obviously got to bring back David Montgomery. But then I have the Bears getting to my hot take. I have the Bears winning the NFC North. I had them last year, even though our, our roster was god-awful. But this year I have a lot, of my, a lot more confidence. With DJ Moore, Claypool, Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, you know, and whoever we – Whatever free agency brings us, you know, whatever else free agency brings us. So basically, everybody we had last year in DJ Moore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Them hey. niggas wasn't like that. Clay Cole Komet got he he a he bought Cole Komet got better, but Claypool ain't nothing. Um, Offensive line is going to be better too. We're going to get yeah, at we least need that three. We're going to get three new starters on the offensive line at least. Or if we're feeling less confident in Braxton Jones. But there's only one offensive lineman I feel confident in, 100%, Tevin Jenkins. He was mauling people. He was doing his thing. That's the only one I feel really confident in. But Braxton Jones, I like the potential. I like the upside. So, you know, I mean, would you want the Bears to get uh, Orlando Brown Jr., the tackle from the Chiefs? He wants to be paid. Absolutely. He wants to be paid, like, tackle resetting. He wants to get paid, like, 
best Let's offensive tackle in the league. You you would do that? Easy. But Absolutely. Braxton Jones is the left tackle. He wants to be the left tackle. So would you move him to right tackle? What would you do about that? Nigga, if we reset the market for <laughs> left tackle, he playing left tackle. <laughs> Brax, right. Go ahead and move over, Chief. It's levels Easy to this. Question. Easy question, but yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for, for the sure. future for the Bears. You know, Ryan Poles Me definitely too. is showing he's that guy. He's no he's know what he's doing to, you know, because you look at it, DJ Moore is twenty five. All the people on offense that we have to continue to build on are under twenty five. So things are looking great for this Bears team. He had a good couple gems in the last draft class. I expect him to get a couple more gems. So as a Bears fan, I couldn't be more excited for the future and excited for the season. Hey, hopefully, you know, uh, McCaskey people are watching this so they can give us season tickets for the low. <laughs> for the low, Please. shout us out. I mean, because we, we keep, you know, putting out, putting out praise for the Bears. You know, might as well give us, might as well bless us real quick. <laughs> It's not too, too much to ask, of course. <laughs> At least we'll take a we'll take the nosebleeds as long as we there for every game. <laughs> you five me, <laughs> but that's all we got for the show, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We're gonna keep posting content. You know, free agency starts on Monday, so we're gonna be posting stuff for you know free agency predictions, reactions. The draft is starting next month. We're going to put out some more mock drafts. Who knows? We'll be posting content, so be up to date with it. Check out the Instagram, Six Man Blitz, the Twitter, Six Man Blitz, TikTok, MH97FF, I believe, personal TikTok. But keep checking out all this stuff because we're posting content. And keep staying with us. Thank you for all the love and all the views. <laughs> <laughs> keep watching Six I'm Man swear. Blitz. We we'll keep putting out content, and we're going to keep – you updated with everything basketball and football. But like I said, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We As got our always, basketball analyst coming on. Ryan Wynn, yeah. Oh shit, yeah. Check him out. He'll be he'll be uh, he'll be in the studio. <laughs> but like I mentioned, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. As always, peace. <laughs>